Hi guys, hope you're having a good week so far. It's Tuesday, edging towards the hump day, the Wednesday. We can do it guys, we can get through this week. We can get to June. Okay guys, so this Harry and Meghan saga, this paparazzi chase saga just continues. And I don't know if any of you saw, but there was... um a reporter on Good Morning Britain who's actually spoken to one of the paparazzi who have allegedly chased Harry and Meghan on that fateful night. So uh, Good Morning Britain obviously is a show in England. If those of you who don't know about the show, it's a morning show, obviously. And so this uh, video is taken from that uh, interview and it's obviously a wider interview, so it's it's 18 minutes 57, but I'm obviously just going to take snippets, and please excuse me for stopping and starting, because uh, I have to for copyright reasons. Okay, so the interview has already started, and he gets to the point now where he's talking about the photographer. While it was part of that pursuit, uh, says, listen, it was their drivers that were making things really, really dangerous. Uh, it was uh, uh, one of them uh, who was involved there, really uh, at the uh, cutting edge of, of what was going on yesterday. Uh, clear from talking to him that the couple didn't really play the game that many celebrities do with the paparazzi here in New York City. And this at a time that Prince Harry... Well, he's in court in London against the Home Office or has a case there because of a lack of security. Uh, my report, I must warn you, has flashing images. The man behind the wheel is one of the photographers that Harry and Meghan accuse of causing a near catastrophic... So I'm really unclear as to why he wants his identity kept private. Um, because if the police have already been involved... If this has already been reported, it seems to me a bit weird. And if Harry's taken some footage, it seems to me a bit weird that he would want to be secret. You know, it, it to me, it, it seems, you know, he hasn't been arrested. There hasn't been a police report. Now he wants to remain private. Was he paid to be there by Harry and Meghan? Was this staged? I mean, I don't know. A chase. We got on the highway, then we, we went north, then we came back south. The photographer, who wants to keep his own identity hidden, says it was the royal couple's drivers that made it dangerous. His driver made the situation extra tense. And do you think that person drove dangerously through New York City? Yes. There was zigzagging, there was cutting off, there was like coming super close to the cars, um, squeezing, wedging. The Duke and Duchess were here in New York to pick up an award and left with Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland. From there, they were followed on a journey that took them around large areas of the city, eventually ending up at the 19th Precinct Police Station, where they jumped into a taxi. Now, some people might say that the driver was was driving to try and get away from the paparazzi and that he was zigzagging and so forth and so forth. But my personal view is knowing what had happened to Harry's mother, knowing New York, knowing the paparazzi, that it would have been safer and wiser, both from Harry's point of view and the security's point of view, to have not got involved in a chase especially when that went on allegedly for two hours. What, can you not just stop your car? Stop your car or go into a garage or go into a hotel or go into a restaurant or go into the police station. Just stop the car. And allegedly where they had the award ceremony, where they were staying was 10 minutes away. But they didn't want to, they didn't want the paparazzi to know where they were staying because they were staying with a friend and they didn't want to compromise that friend's security. I wonder whether he, they were staying with Beyonce and Jay-Z, but hey. But the point is, is that, you know, they kind of, in my view, created this situation because they didn't want the paparazzi to know where they were staying. And so they went around New York for like two hours driving around trying to lose them, which obviously you're not going to lose them because they're the paparazzi. And New York is such a heavy populated, densely trafficked city. So it's going to be very easy for them to follow you because you're basically moving really slowly. So you're not going to lose them, as it were. But they're trying to lose them. So they've created a situation that, like, wasn't possible. And 
they've exaggerated it by saying that it was this near fatal catastrophic incident, which is just ridiculous. And I can believe this photographer in the sense that their drivers were ducking and diving and, you know, being kind of dangerous. Um, but they're going to say it's obviously to try and um, evade the paparazzi. Uh, paparazzi, they just came out of nowhere and just started taking pictures and flashing. It was like a, like, how do you say, like a light show. This is the taxi driver. And Prince Harry and his wife and the other lady, they were nervous and they looked scared. Whilst New York City... Why would you put them in a taxi, first of all? A taxi driver who you just hailed down in the street. So you've taken them out of a secure, blacked-out SUV and you put them into a taxi where the windows are not blacked out so they can obviously be photographed. There isn't privacy. You've got one security guard. You now don't have your security detail. And you've got a driver that is unknown to you, that is not a hired driver. It's not a professional driver in the sense that he has been hired to drive around very high-profile, secure people. So, like, for example, he's not trained, you know, to uh, to go on a chase and, you know, escape uh, people that are trying to come after you and attack you you know like a, someone who would drive the president around for example so you know not to discredit the taxi driver in any way he's obviously a professional driver but you know what i mean so you've now got in the car and you've got this driver that you like don't even know and you've got no control of and you don't even know what how he's going to drive or whether he's a dangerous driver particularly obviously with what happened with harry's mother where again you know this was an unknown driver it was a driver known to the alfires but not diana it wasn't royal protection and this guy allegedly, or well, it was found that he was uh, a drunk driver. So it's just really bizarre that the security would allow you to do that. And then only for 10 minutes just to try and like hide from the paparazzi. But how are you hiding in windows that are not even blacked out? It's just so bizarre. I just don't even know. I mean, obviously, you would be better off hiding in like a department store, like a hotel. It just makes no sense. So I'm going to forward this video a bit because we know, we, you know, we've seen all this stuff about what the mayor said and so forth and i've done another video on what the taxi driver said what the mayor said what the nypd said so please do go check out that video so i'm just going to forward it so obviously this is 18 minutes 57 so please do come and watch the entire video i'm just going on snippets others too believe the story may be exaggerated as the late queen memorably said recollections may vary and this is a classic case of where Meghan and harry's view uh, varies very much from that of the NYPD and the mayor's office. After Prince, so Andrew Norton, who just spoke, he is a royal author. He wrote the book Diana, um, I believe it's Diana, my true story, or Diana in her words, or something like that. And it basically was like the massive um, book that caused a lot of controversy because it divulged a lot of as it were secrets if we could say although there were um, a certain number of people that knew about these things anyway so there were rumors circulating anyway but it was about the royal marriage it was about her eating disorder it was about the affair and what happened was she diana had cooperated with andrew norton but she later on denied that she cooperated and said you know that the book had nothing to do with me and then that obviously led to prince charles then coming out and um, admitting that he had an affair, which then led on to Diana's famous interview with Martin Bashir. So um, Andrew Norton is a very uh, experienced royal biographer, and he also did a biography on Meghan called, I think, Meghan the Hollywood Princess or something like that. So he's also done a biography on these two. So in my view, he's very well researched and he is very well learned. And so he kind of knows what he's talking about, is what I'm trying to say. Diana, Harry's mother, died in a car crash pursued by paparazzi. Harry's talked about his fears of history repeating itself. Were they reacting that they were in a bad place? There was a moment where there was a obvious smile on Meghan's face. I think he got a video of me. Did he say obvious smile on Meghan's face? New York police say, thankfully, there were no collisions, no injuries, and so far, no arrests. Richard Gaysford, Good Morning Britain, New York City. Which and I don't know if you heard him, he said Harry took a video of me. And that's my point is, you're known, so I don't understand why you don't want your face to be seen on this report. Seems a bit weird to me. And if Harry's got his video of his face, 
then why hasn't this been reported to the police? Okay, guys. Well, that interview obviously goes on. It goes on to um, interview a couple of other sort of panelists. So if you want to, who then go on to discuss this incident. So if you want to check it out, then go ahead. And I came across this video um, on YouTube. And this is a lady who says she witnessed the pursuit now, she talks pretty much in Harry and Meghan's favour. It's really weird because she sort of corroborates their account, but then at the end is like, you know, I I need to speak out because I want them to know that, you know, there are supporters here in the US of Harry and Meghan. So it's almost like she's not neutral. It's almost like she's already got a bias towards Harry and Meghan. So there's already this bias in her to say she already acknowledges that there's already all this negative press and so what she wants to do is to show that there is some positivity so to show that there are supporters so it's almost as though she is a supporter and so she's not neutral and then I also question how much of this two-hour chase she actually witnessed you know it it seems realistically she would have only witnessed parts of it so I wonder whether she was one of those fans that was standing out in the exit of the uh, award ceremony that wanted to take pictures and whatnot, whatnot of Harry and Meghan. Um, Because how could she have witnessed the whole two hours? It seems a bit bizarre. But okay, this is what she says. But okay, so out of fairness, this is what she says. If I hadn't seen them follow the car afterwards, I would be shocked by the news this morning. But the way I saw them follow the car, I wasn't surprised by the... So she saw the paparazzi follow Harry and Meghan. Okay. But, I mean, do you hear anything else? I mean, do you see anything else? Did you see the actual chase? Um, Because that would seem really bizarre. Lines. And uh, it became pretty aggressive. The paparazzi had access to the garage from where they were entering and they were being kind of manhandled by the bodyguards to prevent them from getting too close to the Sussexes. And the entire time, a lot of the paparazzi were heckling Meghan and Harry um, and making just negative comments, trying to get a reaction out of them. And then as they were leaving, just the way they chased the car, it just reminds you of like all the other scenes you've seen in the past um, with Prince Harry's mother. Of course. I mean, what everything is like Princess Diana, Princess Diana. I really think the link to Princess Diana is actually disgusting because, as I said, you know, Harry and Meghan were driving around trying to lose the paparazzi because they didn't want the paparazzi to see where they were going. This isn't just the paparazzi randomly just hunting them down like his mother was. And this is a completely different situation because looking at some of the pictures and some of the video footage, it seems like a like a one of the normal situations of like a high profile celebrity that gets photographed. I mean, we have, we haven't, you know, we can't forget that Mariah Carey, Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift, Jay-Z and Beyonce that live in New York, like, uh, hello, but they managed to get by in life, like quite normally. And those celebrities are so much more than Harry and Meghan. So let's just remind ourselves of that. And, um, I kind of feel like the situation was created by them or exacerbated by them or perhaps staged by them, I don't know. Um, But the links to his mother, it's like, just, it's like every time someone sees the paparazzi take a picture of someone, it's like automatically we're just going to link it to his mother. I mean, I think that's a bit really annoying. It's just really annoying for me that like, Megan seems to have the race card, and then he seems to have the Diana card. So it's like every single thing they do, everything that they might be held accountable for, or any actions they might do that is negative or bad or deserves bad press or deserves negativity it's always waving the race card and then waving the diana card and then it all wipes away and then they're given a clean slate and how many times are they going to be given a clean slate i really don't know and it was just really upsetting if it was triggering for me i can't even imagine how it must have felt for them triggering for her triggering for her because she saw a car follow their car and that was triggering for her because it brought her back to princess diana i mean if this if she isn't purposefully trying to support them and fulfill their narrative i really don't know what this is to actually experience something like that 
well, this is the reason why we're there to support the Sussexes because we know. Well, there we are. Because we know how much negativity does surround them. So we don't want them to come out and only hear negative things. We want them to come out and hear that they have supporters as well. Who's we? And so there we are. She's a supporter. So, you know, this video was described as witness describes Harry and Meghan paparazzi pursuit. Now, if this witness was cross-examined in a court of law, I don't know how credible she would be because, you know, she's seeing things through the prism of being a supporter. She was probably there because she was supporting them and that's how she witnessed the stuff. She wasn't just walking down the road and she's clearly saying, you know, we need to show support for them. So she's clearly got a bias. And it's also pretty sad that if you are a fan of Harry and Meghan and you were there at that night trying to take photos or wanting to see Harry and Meghan then you're kind of a part of the problem aren't you because it's only really the supporters of Harry and Meghan that have created this whole frenzy around them where the press is so interested and the press writes about them and people want photographs and the paparazzi want photographs and people want to go find out where they are that's because of people that are interested and because they have fans and supporters so she's part of the problem in my view here in the US and I love the eye roll at the end it's like here in the US as in like you know snubbing England anyway thank you lovely for your uh, testimony so guys please do subscribe to my channel please help me get to a thousand followers and yeah like subscribe please put a, a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about this incident Okay, guys, take care. Bye.